previously on D Sire. Kasumi, Kasumi, are Nandeska? Are was Waharatawa. Chijo Yakajimeter no Tembo Daigate. Tashi, no botemitai. Doka Stano, eh? Oh, yeah. I could have sworn I felt like someone was watching me for a second. Was my mind just playing tricks on me? ああ、もしもし。あた、うん、そう。なんかよくわかんないラブコメやってるけど。彼の方は結構油断ならないね。っていうか、鋭すぎ。後ろに目があるんじゃないかと思ったよ。どこまで理解してるのか知らないけど、
The man of gold required a worthy opponent for this battle. Without one, his wish could not be granted. ケイラにとっては必ずしもそうではあるまい。恐ろしい。疎ましいか。それとも憎らしく恨めしいか。この60年で、そうした思いが熟成され、火がつくまでに腐敗したか。生産敗。ケイはあれをどう思う。特に不守りを閣下は我らの死であり父でありますいけの念を持ちこそされ憎むなどとは恐れ多いほうでは、なぜカールの術を会議するあれの凄まじさ、知らぬわけではあるまいよそれにつきましては、ボンプゆえの偏
for the beasts, the axe surmounted to no more than a master gently petting a dog. Yet to the priest, it was akin to being squeezed by a giant's hand. Yet the latter had already grown accustomed to the colossal difference in their strength. Even amidst pressure fierce enough to terrify a man of valor and drive those of weaker minds to insanity, he managed to maintain enough mental composure to take it all in stride. The beast made an abrupt pause in his speech, his tone laced with mischief. The priest, despite feeling perplexed by the occurrence, made no sign of looking up as his master made a brief declaration. A bet. Hardly an unforeseen question, for the priest had been required to report everything current, current, uh, concerning the boy. As such, he answered with the truth. Hmm. つまり the priest sighed, consequently asserting that he alone would continue to suffice. Far be it for me to call the boy weak, yet in his current state, he shall not amount to much. When taking the entirety of the obsidian round table into account, his strength is adequate at best. Consequently, the priest nearly thought he had misheard the words his master uttered next. No! Oh. The beast would take action on his own. The priest could very well imagine what such a choice would entail. The beast's presence smiled, allowing his amusement to show. He was not more than a specter, and could only intervene in this world for but a handful of minutes. Yet that alone could still pose a colossal threat, capable of melting the boy's very being to cinders through its mere presence. As the priest broke his gaze with the ground and looked up, forgetting his manners for a second, the beast spoke in a voice of thinly veiled ridicule, his tone of fire with a certain kind of zeal. トモの手際を見てみたい。カールの大体がいかほどか。次回にこの目で確かめよう。As the beast uttered that, the priest found himself assailed by a skull-splitting torrent of wickedness. His flesh covered in goosebumps, Trifa felt a surging of a long-forgotten emotion. Dread. His master made every single word he had uttered. If Red and Fuji were careless enough to provoke the beast, well... <laughs> <laughs> the 
どうした生産会 ?K はそれほど私に眠っていてほしいのかい,いえ。At any rate, this would not conclude with merely a single disturbance. Depending on how things played out, everything could be over before Dawn even had a chance to break. Bestarava, Jumbi wa watashi ga totono emashu. Dou ka kakka, sore made wa, shin ni o makase kudasai masu yo. Voicing Amada's proposal, the priest considered all possible outcomes, as well as the numerous pawns under his control. Yet the answer had already been evident. He wondered exactly how he could bend the situation in his own favor. Alas, he could not find any other way. This would surely mark the end of his makeshift family life with Lisa. Trifa felt a twinge of pity for the boy, for he would soon learn what it meant to face true monsters. What? Marie and I were brought to this place by the girl who claimed to know Shiru. To say it was not my kind of place would have been a huge understatement. I'd normally never even come near a joint like this. It felt detached from reality to the point I could have sworn I was in some TV show or a manga. This place and myself belong to completely different genres. So, this was the town's dark underbelly. Surrounded by a bunch of seedy looking people at all angles, the mysterious girl kept on walking with a broad smile plastered on her face. Teamy, thick smoke flooded into my eyes and throat as the rhythm of loud, booming club music filled the air. The patrons, clearly smoking marijuana or some similar drug, All shot their bloodshot gazes at us as we walked in. I was simply disgusted at having been brought to a place run down enough to make me want to think twice before inhaling a lungful of its air. I felt like I'd just been led into the collective dumpster of the city. Saying all that in a teasing tone, the girl opened the door leading further in. Thank you. And there he was. What I felt in that moment could have been likened to having encountered a ghost. I could find no better way to express coming face to face with a guy I thought I cut all ties with and would never see again. So, needless to say, I felt neither anger nor sadness. And definitely no happiness. No. No happiness at all. My reunion with Shiro could better be characterized by a twinge of bewilderment and ripples of irritation. The fuck? Look at that. Oh my god. Look at that. He looks like a douche. He looks like a douche. Yo! It's because he is, right? Of course, he's smoking. That's like the cool thing in Japan. Smoking. Look at that. He hadn't changed at all. That was my first impression in a nutshell. Shiro Yusa sat on a sofa facing mine in his VIP room deep within the club. He looked at me with the same arrogant smile he wore the last time we saw each other. Just looking at all that made it clear what he'd been up to in the last two months. And Shiro had always worn his non-conformist thoughts on his sleeve, and he was way too eccentric for his own good. 
The kind of guy who loves sticking his nose into trouble and making a mess of things. いいね。まだ根に持ってんのか。怪我治ってんだろ。別に後遺症があるわけじゃないし、昔のことは流してカラッと行こうや。休活とか女装じゃない。お互い新しい出会いもあったみてえだし。俺は好きに喋るから、お
What do you really want? We all know you didn't call me out here just to catch up. <laughs> no, I didn't. When I quoted his own words back to him, sure, somebody flashed a broad grin. ああ、それもちろんそうしたいがね。それだけの理由でわざわざこんなところに呼んだりしねえよ。ただ会って話すだけなら俺の方からでもいてる。なあれ。これは俺なりの配慮なんだぜ。説明なんかしなくても理解して
だからなあそう呆れた顔すんなってば無理言うなよ<笑> no, I mean, he probably really did try everything. Definitely every kind of quick crime he ever was, no doubt about that. More than a fool, I would have rather called him a nutcase. Was there really a need to go this far just to give every option a shot? Yeah, I'm a good guy. 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 He's not going to kill us, is he? I don't know why I'm worried he's going to kill us, but I have a feeling he's going to try to kill us. Well, I'm not going to kill him. 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 Yeah, positive attitude. Let's do it together. Yeah, we're not like you. Yeah, you should have shot a wink at me. It's still clearly meant to imply something. お前もあんまり人様に褒められることはやってねえみたいだし。ガスだ。そう。お互い話の趣旨はそこだよな。そっちのえっとマリーだけ。暇そうにしてるけどいいのかほっといてああ。マリー likely didn't understand our situation very well she'd been observing our conversation with a blank expression as usual anyway she'd be fine the way she was now if we showed her too much attention she might go off in ways I couldn't possibly predict but on the other hand if we left her alone she likely remained still and calm like a statue that's what I'm hoping for anyway Hardly what I call an ideal state to be in, but at times like this, it was very convenient for me. It'd be best for me to keep Marie's identity secret from these two. They don't need to know any of this. I took a deep breath and went on. It's Huh? I nodded, to which Shiro responded in a casual manner. ここ何日かのお前の行動はほぼ完璧に把握してるな。正確に言うと、月額に転校生が二人来てからってことになるか。That's the bad. なんだと。In other words, 当然、霞のこともよく知ってる。Shit. He knows everything. Well, not everything, probably, but enough. He's gonna be a problem. Oh. Yeah, Ren knows it. We know it. So he had known since the beginning. He took it off. He was in the middle of the night. 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 What? Nanda. Nanda, oh my god, son, not all sort That was a rather stupid question, if I did say so myself. I clearly had nothing to do with us being childhood friends. He did it because he had something to gain from it. Yeah, he wants to use us as leverage. No, wait. Before that. Did he also know about them? I'll make it short. The videos are real long. What? Never mind. So, 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 Anyway, these two idiots probably found a kindred spirit in each other, then gathered all these people to use as their personal henchmen. I bet that was the gist of the bottomless pit. For a tourist town, Suhara City was large enough to have its own underground of sorts. Long story short, they must have rounded up and lumped a bunch of social outcasts together to form this club. Kinda like an anime club. 
but you know, criminals. Basically, people had nowhere else to go. Those who couldn't live without this club. They stayed holed up in here with nothing to do other than breathing. Shiro and Hanju simply grouped them together. In other words, a fearless leader who takes no shit from outsiders. Shiro fit the bill perfectly. He was under the protection of these guys, making use of their influence as a group. From the perspective of these underground types, someone as off the wall Shiro must have looked awfully appealing. With a certain charisma of his own. そんなわけで、色々あれやこれややったわけよ。殺人犯探しか。ま、その通り。先に見つけられちゃつまんねえから、ポリの邪魔もしたけどな。俺らがやってたのはそういうことだよ。その結果として、お前を呼ぶことになったってわけ。腐れ縁だな。After brief pause, Shiro looked at me straight in the eye. Honestly, it was making me feel uncomfortable. I knew that look. I knew that look. He was up to something, no doubt about it. There it is. So they do know about them. I'd guessed as much, but I felt another headache incoming. These two were out of their goddamn minds. What the hell were they thinking? Did they have any idea who these bastards were? What? What was that supposed to mean? They're probably lying to you. Well, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're so you know they're fucked up. Shiro narrowed his eyes, uttering the name as though he just told a rather clever joke. Wait, I don't think Ren knows about this. Does? Oh yeah, he does. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I forgot. Rusalka told him all that crap. Germans, black uniforms, cruelty that deviated from the norm, and xenophobia based on elitism. Yeah, you'd have to be crazy enough to realize who they were. Even I could figure out that much. They were likely the most despised group of modern times. Frequently mentioned as a threat to all mankind, the infamous. <笑>第二次世界大戦の末期に検証金をかけられて今に至るも学が増え続けてる非核外の戦争屋たち人間っていうより怪獣だねそんな奴らが十三にこの町に集まってきてるそうなりゃ実際ほっとけないでしょ地
from what I could tell. Their stake in all this was that they simply wanted to play with fire. They sure as hell didn't want to do this out of the goodness of their hearts, so no. I had no right to judge them. But they weren't exactly a duo of selfless heroes, that much was clear. They wanted to partake in a bizarre situation far removed from a mundane day-to-day -day life. Shira would likely call it a fresh genre he had yet to experience before. I found it ridiculous, foolish, and outright incomprehensible. But there were definitely benefits in teaming up with them. Knowledge was power, as they said, and using these guys for the information wouldn't be such a bad choice. But, on the other hand, nope, nope, we're not doing it, nope. I cut them down with a curt response. Exactly. You guys, you guys don't know what these guys can do. These guys aren't playing dress up, man. The scariest thing about those freaks was how they were practically immune to conventional attacks. Shira might have been anything but normal or conventional, but not even he would last long in a fight against them. This wasn't some petty gang war here. That's exactly what I'm saying. They'd be no match for them. With a bunch like this under Shiro's command, he could likely get his hands on all sorts of weapons, but it wouldn't mean Jack. Bullets would just bounce off those monsters. War was like one big game to them. Oh crap, he... He led us into that one. God damn it. I hesitated for a moment, but I no longer cared. They already knew. I have the means and a weapon to fight and kill those bastards. I already did. I, well, I injured one of them, but he's dead now, so it doesn't matter. He was going to die anyway. ずっと裏方に徹するほどおとなしくもないだろうし、俺と お前はお前で好きにやれよ。まあ、組めりゃそれが一番いいがね。そうじゃなきゃダメだって言うわけでもない。Go on. I had to be completely honest, I didn't give a damn about what he did, I don't care. But if he ended up recklessly getting himself killed, I... Hanju <laughs> interrupted just as I was ready to punch Shiru in the face. She might have feigned boredom, but the look in her eyes meant business. That may have been true, but I still had more of a chance in the fight than these two did. I'm sorry. For a moment, his reply was both confused and speechless. She mockingly pointed to Marie. This isn't good. If we keep this up, we're gonna spill all our secrets. I, I can't tell them. Besides, I would achieve nothing, and not even I fully comprehend the precise logic behind the whole thing. 
連中がいろいろとドハズれてるのは知ってるよ一番の問題は何を食らわしゃ殺せるのかっていうことだレンお前はやつらをやれるんだろうならどうやってどのようにどこからそれを手に入れる This isn't some weapon you can just pick up off the street, man. 博物館の展示品が一つ消えたってことくらい知ってんだぜ。How do you ever mind? I felt my heartbeat accelerate. He's not stupid. He's gonna put the dots together eventually. A guillotine slumbered within my arm, the cradle that Marie manifested from. Shiro had likely realized at least that much, even if faintly. Normally, people would call me a nut job if I said something that ridiculous, but this guy didn't view things through the filter of common sense. And would likely believe any absurd story I'd tell him if there was a logical explanation to back it up. In which case, what was I supposed to do here? Keeping it a secret would not make him back down at all. Perhaps the best choice would be to tell him everything I knew, potentially raising his chances of survival. But that would. Len, what did you do? Quiet, I'm thinking. The grown ups are talking. I stood up, silently taking Marie's hand in the process. We're out of here. Shiku Mimi Motane, t e k a Wakatter, the law. Ah, Wakatter, yo. Omae no Seka Kurayo, na. So did it? Omae Mor no Seka Wakatter, yo, na. Ah. I answered with his gun still thrust at my temple. In the end, giving him a live demonstration was the only way he'd understand. Shiro.、Mm -hmm. Closing my eyes, I gripped the gun with my right hand. I had to use as little power as possible, unless I wanted him to end up with one arm less. I kept gripping Marie's hand while focusing my mind, concentrating on a single word cut. And the moment I did that, his gun ended up cleaved in half. Rendering it useless. Thankfully, Shiro remained unhurt. I'm not thankful for that. Iko, Mari. I uttered that in the calmest voice I could muster. Shiro and Hanju made no reply, and instead stared at the broken gun with deep curiosity. I hoped I had finally managed to cut through their thick skulls. My aim was to give them a little scare, but the fact they barely even reacted made me feel uneasy. In fact, it might have had the opposite effect. Although regretting my actions, I decided to just put it aside and leave. So, let's go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. So, let's go. I hesitated whether or not to go on. Kasumi no Ken, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. けどあいつはもうそんなことできないからなちょっかいかけないでやってくれ And with that Marie and I left I wasn't sure if this would be enough to ward them off but unfortunately I had no time for them Unless I defeated Sakura and Rusalka by this weekend Kasumi would be in danger I should just focus on accomplishing that task and nothing else for now I didn't have time to keep playing with them As I mentally said my farewells to Shiru, I hoped to never see him again. Still, I felt relieved to have seen him safe and sound. As Ren Fuji left the room with a sour look on his face, Ellie heaved a faint sigh. She specifically ordered the other patrons to leave him be, so there probably wouldn't be any unwanted trouble. More importantly, though. Ah,、uh, Hano san. 気持ちはわかるんだけどシロフィギュアのことは分かるんだけどシロフィギュアのことは分かるんだけどシロフィギュアのことは分かるんだけどシロフィギュアのことは分かるんだけどシロフィギュアのことは分
なこと言われてもな事実そうなんだから仕方ねえだろいやなんつうかこう笑えるな漫画みたいで面白いやっぱ人生こうでないとつまんねえあいつは昔からいろいろ飽きないネタを持ってきてくれるんだわ自分は普通だって顔しながら実は一番変態なんだぜウケるだろ<笑>うんとりあえずそこのコメントは控えさせてもらうけどまあなかなかいいんじゃない少なくとも連中をどうにかする手段があるっていうのは分かったんだし正直私としてはここで一旦引くのもありかと思うんだけど冗談抜かせよ<笑>だよね I couldn't be sure it would be meaningless at this point. His fuse had already been lit. But her mumbling a complaint or two, Ellie directed her gaze at the ceiling. Okay, Wakata. Eat the rush. So no cardi. Tabra de Kaitik that are used on a yo. Ah, you are enough to mock at the root there. Says the Kitash de Matrio. De. Hi, hi. Corre de so. Produced something resembling the thermos. Though its contents remained a mystery, judging by how casually she threw it over to Shiro, it was likely nothing dangerous. Although it wasn't likely it was just a simple drink either. Genjo, so they got Kanaka, Hobo, Yagidane. Tamish to me, the dummy got the Sasa to Miguel Kotos, Miss Rio. Take them, Anta was top. Nanda. Suru flashed a wolfish grin, casually throwing the thermos from one hand to the other. Ellie was more than aware that once a certain fire lit up in his eyes, there was no stopping him. Which would explain why she heaved a sigh of resignation. <laughs> Barking a laugh at Ellie's words, Shiro turned around. Njama! Seize Nagak Tanoshimiru Yoni! Asson de Kurua! After leaving the club, I walked the streets of the shopping district with Marie in tow. The city wasn't in the boonies, but walking around with a foreign girl at night really did make me stand out. I could feel low out of Kiri's stares. That happened to them day as well, but a time like this, I'd have to. No, wait. After rethinking things, I took hold of Marie's hand again. No. Do you want to go to the place? Do you want to go to the place? Ah. Having said that, though, she only knew a handful of places across town. So, the tower. I said I knew she'd say that. Once we'd arrived, Marie stared at the lit up tower with a blank expression. Sure is. Due to being a bit of a date spot, this place was fairly crowded, even at night. Still, I figured it was much safer than the shopping district. Seeing how everyone here was busy being focused on themselves, they didn't bother paying attention to anyone else. No longer having to endure dozens of stairs sizing us up, I finally allowed myself to relax a little and sat down on a nearby bench with Marie. Okay then, now what? I knew what to do, and felt fully prepared to do it, but I had no concrete plan. The ache in my neck remained the only reliable way to find my enemies, but I couldn't count on that all the time. Drawing their attention could work, but would only end up involving innocent civilians, which put me in a bit of a deadlock. Now that I'd flat out rejected Shiro, I couldn't count on his intelligence network, and blindly looking for the bastards probably wouldn't yield any results either. It would help if I could predict where they show up, but that wasn't happening. 
As I continuously, aimlessly pondered all of that, I felt someone tugging in my sleeve. Aww. Hmm? Marie pointed to a man and a woman a short distance away. They appeared to be a couple. I found myself slight bewildered by having to suddenly face such a realistic topic. The woman was crying as the man continued comforting her. A common sight, really. どこ I was surprised about how sharp her ears seemed to be, but to my misfortune, that only led to Marie once again taking interest in something rather troublesome. For what I could gather based on Marie's comments, the man appeared to have either confessed to her and was turned down, or there was something else she did along those lines. She was apologizing for having hurt him. <laughs> The situation seemed totally flipped on its head. The man probably should have been the one doing the crying, but seeing how the woman broke down tears first, he could neither cry himself nor blame her. Talk about one mess of turn of events. I felt like I'd witnessed something I shouldn't have, but now that I'd been asked, I decided to explain how I felt about it. あれは演技っていうか自己暗示っていうかとにかく一種の保身かなマリーはあの人を見てびっくりしたろうん泣いてるやつってのは割と特別扱いされるからああいう場合具体的に言うと泣けば優しくされるんだよ。Even the wrong doer could become the victim. Convincing the other party that you were the suffering as well could help settle things without making you out to be the bad guy. Marie tilted her head in confusion. Admittedly, it was all speculation on my part. But after watching them for a while, it appeared I wasn't far off the mark. <laughs> the woman suddenly slapped the man. I had nothing but sympathy for him as a fellow man. You saw this kind of situation all the time in both real life and the world of fiction. But I had no clue on how one was supposed to properly handle it. So I decided to reverse the question. Marie, as strange as it was, if the majority ended up believing in something, then it certainly would become an accepted truth in our society. In the end, that was probably just life. So. Would she be pissed off by the woman's attitude? Or would she instead sympathize with her? Either way, she would no doubt say something extreme. <laughs> Still, I felt like I was being a bit biased the whole time, so I decided to back the woman up a little. <laughs> Self-hatred for having done something horrible. Guilt at having hurt the man. She knew crying made her cowardly, but once she started, the tears wouldn't stop, leading to one vicious spiral. You're not wrong. 
意識せずにって前提なら矛盾も必要じゃないかと思うよあああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああそういう気持ちを持ってるんだね。She may have just poured salt into my wound. レンはシロに怒ってたけど、嫌いなわけじゃないんでしょ ?I was convinced I never want to see him again, but when I did meet him, I felt somewhat relieved. He genuinely pissed me off, and I couldn't care less if he died in a ditch somewhere. But I didn't want him to get caught up in this. And c o n s i d e r being worried about him was true, not just some flimsy excuse. Betsy, I'm not a tada no baka yaro da yo. Mukashkara aitsuga karande kuru to rokna koto ga okora nai. Dakara jie te yuka, tsumari, jibun no tame ni yatta koto de. Ore a mo, aitsu ni hikaki maa sareru no unzari nan da yo. Tada, sore dake. Marie smiled as she listened to me complain, but contrary to what I expected her to say. Ben, kawaii ne? First Kasumi, then Himuro, Usalka, and now even Maria labeled me as such. But for some reason it didn't irritate me as much this time. Sure, it was embarrassing, but I couldn't find it in myself to make a comeback. Tabu, mata e r u t o m o y o No shipping now. Ah, that's all. Could she, like, stop saying things that made me sick to my stomach and could also potentially be taken the wrong way? Please? He was like a curious kid faced with a pet or a toy, wanting to play around with it until it broke. All he cared about was having fun, even if it led targets of his interests to an early grave. But that still didn't mean I understood him. Still, I gave an exasperated shrug and stopped complaining. Just then. Just then. Oh, Ren, what's up? No, people. There were a few, few number of people around us until a moment ago, but now it was just the two of us. The couple from before was summarily nowhere in sight. I felt my entire body being covered in goosebumps as a dull ache began to throb in my neck. Could this be? Mari, Sumanai. Hanashino Tsuki wa mata hato de shio. I wrapped my arm around her. Honto ni wari. Dekiru dake ko yatte omote ni dashte yari takatta n d a k e d o Marie was essentially a ghost. The only reason I could talk to her like this was because I'd been maintaining her in the physical world through my Yetzera. And now I had to change her into something else entirely. All in order. To fight. To defeat those bastards. Marie, いいよな Are you ready? I could undo the formation for a moment and return her to my body. It was probably possible if I concentrated really hard, but I wanted her consent first. Marie looked right into my eyes. <laughs> 